Ministry the Television Company Western Armenia represent the most important news for today. Good day. Today's broadcast. The Republic of Western Armenia delegation will take part in the diplomatic conference. The Italian periodical L'Espresso refers to the depopulation of Artsakh. Frank Fallon joins the call of human rights activists to bring Aliyev to justice. Ankara Amarsia and Bavram wrote, Bagradzian. Islamized Armenians. Armenian identity. Baku managed to defeat the presentation of the collection dedicated to Artsakh. The Republic of Western Armenia delegation will participate in the diplomatic conference. The delegation of Western Armenia will participate in the diplomatic conference to conclude the proposed International Convention on Intellectual Property, Genetic Resources and Related Traditional Knowledge, which will take place in May 2024 at the YIPO headquarters in Geneva. The upcoming diplomatic conference will put an end to the many years of negotiations of the YIPO member states, during which the voices of the interested parties, including the indigenous people, became fully audible. Genetic resources include medicinal plants, crops, and animal breeds. Genetic resources are not protected as intellectual property, but inventions based on them can be protected most often through a privet. The proposal to hold a diplomatic conference was approved by the General Assembly last year. And on March 14, 2024, at the special session of the Preparatory Committee, the place and the time of the last stage of the negotiation marathon were decided. The Italian periodical L'Espresso referred to the depopulation of Artsakh. The famous Italian periodical L'Espresso published two important articles at once, referring to the policies of the dictatorial regime established in Baku and the criminal acts of depopulation of Artsakh. In particular, the presidential elections held in Baku in February were described as not free and the events that took place in Artsakh in September 2023 were nothing but ethnic cleansing. The authors of the articles also referred to the relationship between the Italian government and the criminal regime in Baku, obviously not welcoming those connections. The article literally turns a blind eye to the head of the Baku's tribe, saying that since Baku feeds us with the uh, methane salt at a good price, there is no need to speak about the human civil social rights of the people of Baku or the Armenian refugees who immigrated from Artsakh. When it is not profitable, it is better to ignore the moral principles because Rome is a diligent client of Baku, with which relations are political rather than contractual. Protests are not tolerated. The mortar of silence is very welcome, and flattery pleases the Baku regime. Like, for example, a free Italian parliamentarian uh, who accepted Baku's invitation and carried out an observation mission in the extraordinary presidential election held on February 7, which Ilham Aliyev organized to ensure his fifth mandate, the offer rights. The offer re reminds as well that Artsakh was iso isolated from December 2022, prohibiting the transit of people and humanitarian aid. After a nine-month siege, Baku launched a final offensive which led to the exodus of Armenian citizens. The European Parliament called it an act of ethnic cleansing. Baku leader Ilham Aliyev, who won the election on February 7, has been in power for more than 20 years and has used the aftermath of the Ukraine war to reunify Artsakh. After Russian's aggression, indeed many debates took place in Europe about gaining energy independence from Moscow. Baku became a close partner in the supply of gas and hydrocarbons. However, the military escalation that took place in September, which led to the end of the existence of Artsakh and the Armenian presence in the region, did not lead to the end of military operations in the South Caucasus, where tensions are escalating again. However, the military escalation that took place in September, which led to the end of existence of Artsakh and the Armenian presence in the region, did not lead to the end of military operations in South Caucasus, where tensions are escalating again. On February 14, four Armenian soldiers were killed in an attack by the Baku military along the border. Negotiations between the two former Soviet republics have reached a deadlock. The leadership of Baku does not hide that they are interested in the Sunni region of Armenia in order to be able to connect the exclave of Nakhichevan with the rest of the country. Meanwhile, Artsakh refugees live in temporary shelters in uncertainty, having no past and not knowing whether a new war threatens them in the near future. 
Frank Fallon joins the call of human rights activists to bring Aliyev to justice. U.S. Congressman Frank Fallon reports that he joins human rights activists to call on the United States to hold Baku, leader Ilham Aliyev, accountable for the genocidal policy against the Armenian population of Artsakh. Frank Fallon, a member of the House of Representatives of the U.S. Congress, wrote about this in his X microblog. I joined the human rights activists who call on the USA to hold Aliyev responsible for the genocide of policy against the Armenian population of Artsakh. It is high time that Congress should take steps to impose sanctions for Aliyev and prevent any further security support to Baku, the congressman wrote. Ankara will also cover Amasya, and the road to Bavra will be closed. Bagratyan. They give villages that they are ours with all kinds of papers. Then, did Azerbaijan live there? What is the significant of that? After giving those villages, it become problematic to go Iran and Georgia. Ankara will also destroy Amasya, and the road to Bavra will be closed. The former Prime Minister of Eastern Armenia, Rand Bagradian, told reporters yesterday in Freedom Square, referring to the announcement about handing over the villages of Tavush. He mentioned again that after the consultation in 1918, all the enclaves, Tigran Ashen and the free villages of Tavush were recognized as the territory of Armenian plus Artsvashen. The issue of Artsvashen was also discussed in order to return the lands next to Artsvashen, which were given to Baku in 1949, due to which Artsvashen became an enclave. There are 193 signed protocols, and Baku signed them all in 1980s. Vladimir Movsisyan, whom the Turks wanted to abduct, went after those protocols to get the lands back, and he got 17,000 hectares back. But only in Nirkin Han, these authorities handed over 27,000 hectares. During the genocide, the League of Nations dealt with the issue of forced Islamization of Armenian children and particularly with their release. The operation of liberating Armenian women and children from cap the captivity was difficult due to the obstacles contently created by the Turkish side. The work of liberating Armenian women and children from captivity was difficult due to the obstacles constantly created by the Turkish side. In particular, Christian children were forced to forget their origin, their birth certificates were forged, children were given Turkish names. There were a large number of children in Turkish orphanages who presented themselves as Kurds, but were actually Armenians. The same difficulties arose in locating and freeing captive Christian women. As the report of the Fifth Commission states, finding them was almost impossible because the whole nation was complicit in the crime. 1921, on August 40, a report was submitted to the Council of the League of Nations, according to the data of which 19,815 Armenian children and women were released from Muslim families and about that many are still being held. Armenian identity, paying attention to the historical and cultural data about Hamshenti, it can be said that the Christian and Muslim Hamshenti have the same historical roots, the same traditions, and speak the same language. Their main difference is religious difference. Despite the religious difference, the common historical and cultural basis did not prevent development of cultural ties. For this reason, these groups should be classified as Muslim Hamshenti Armenians and Kistonian Hamshenti Armenians. There are different perceptions of the re relative identity of the two groups. The Armenians of Christian Hamshans are much closer to the Armenian identity than the Hamshans identity, while Ar Armenians of Muslim Hamshans are mostly defined by the Hamshans identity. Hamshanism is ethnic rather than geographic. Hamshanism has acquired the meaning of ethnicity among the Muslim Hamshans, Armenians, and after Islamization, they have separated themselves from the Kistonian Hamshans, Armenians, but at the same time, it has also put a space between Hamshanism and Les and Turkish identities. The situation, which was not a visible problem in the system of Ottoman millet, began to turn into a problem in the Republican region. As a result of the assimilation policy based on the ideology of one language, one nation, and one state of the Republic of Hamshansi, there is a desire to link the Hamshansi identity to the Turkish identity. For this reason, we should not forget that the perception of Turkish Hamshans about their own identity were formed in a political atmosphere that makes them homogeneous and does not accept differences.
the thesis that connect Hamshanism with Turkish identity have not historical, scientific, but ideological foundations. This is evidenced by the works of local and foreign researchers who conduct research independent of the official Turkish ideology. In addition, the above-mentioned documents show that the state also has various information and views on this matter which don't fit into the framework of the official ideology. Baku managed to defeat the presentation of the collection dedicated to Artsakh. The publishing house of the University of Kiel in Germany published the cultural heritage of Artsakh. The collection entitled Armenian History in its Traces in Artsakh, the presentation of which was supposed to take place on March 6 of this year in Berlin. Attempts to disrupt the presentation of almost all telegram channels of Baku unfortunately succeeded. A day before the scheduled date on March 5, the orga organizers, the German Council for Foreign Affairs and the Konrad Adenauer Foundation consulted the event and held it remotely. The reason is stated as follows. Mass campaign against event and risk of escalation. It is not mentioned who exactly organized and carried out the mass campaign to cancel the book presentation. Editors Andreas Müller, Haritsun Haritsunyan, Degmer Heller and Martin Temke issued a statement on March 11. Specifically states, on March 6, 2024, the German Foreign Policy Council, together with the Konrad Adonner Foundation, planned to hold edited by us, the cultural heritage of Artsakh, the presentation of volume Armenian history and its traces in Artsakh. The purpose of the event was to present the book within the framework of a scientific symposium and draw attention to the endangered Armenian cultural heritage due to the emigration to Armenians from Artsakh and the occupation of the region by Baku. Such a danger is seen especially in Nakhichevan in light of the destructive cultural policy of the Baku leadership, where, where Armenian cultural values, churches, monasteries, villages, structures, and even UNESCO World Heritage sites have been destroyed. Due to massive pressure from the Baku embassy and Baku NGOs, the event was cancelled and held in a digital format. The embassy of Baku in Germany urged the German Foreign Policy Council and the Konrad Adenauer Foundation to refrain from holding allegedly biased events. This demand was accompanied by personal threatening letters. Furthermore, a mass mailing campaign was launched, probably organized by the embassy using similar text. In addition, it was announced that a pro-Azerbaijan demonstration will take place in the immediate vicinity of the venue in Berlin. We find it insulting and unjustified to be labeled. As the homophobic in the program of such a symposium, which focuses on the protection of cultural heritage, we are disappointed by the lack of willingness on the part of the state authorities to adequately protect the concern of the minorities and the important event for the preservation of their cultural heritage. We protest against the actions of the embassy in Baku and call on the structures responsible for the foreign relations of the Federal Republic of Germany to make a political statement. We call on the free press of our country to highlight and document the attempts of a foreign sovereign state to restrict freedom of speech. In general, we call on the Federal Republic of Germany, Germany and the international community to intervene immediately despite all obstacles to protect the endangered cultural heritage in Artsakh. This was all for today. Goodbye. Gatara el lavor eru Edun has nis kavancha Kazit nisogani Ashugibas nis kavancha Kazit Oh,